today I am gonna, I am gonna teach you how to pour epoxy resin on a very uneven surface and get it to hold its shape no problem. I am using faux rizzle resin and it is by far the best resin on the market. Faux Rizzle Resin is the only company I know of that takes out things I can't pronounce and causes all these problems. You want to start actually with part B, not part A. Part B is thinner and so it doesn't stick so much to the bottom of wherever you're pouring in. Once you've poured both part A and part B, and the ratio is one to one, the trick with this um, particular resin is you can add a little bit of alcohol, like for two cups, which I have here, I would say one to two, stick closer to one tablespoon of alcohol, and it will help pop any air bubbles. So then you mix it, in your first container for three minutes. Once you've mixed for three minutes, you are gonna to wanna to pour into a new container. And I know this doesn't look new, but it's clean because I stick all of my garbage in and just put it in there, get it in there nice and tight. The next day you'll be able to peel it out and all the resin will come with it. So you're not having to buy all these containers and be super, super wasteful. We are transferring and then that's when you want to add your color. And today we're using Thunder by Faux Rizzle Resin. Have something like, something like this wherever you're mixing because you're going to want to know the temperature in the room should be about 75 degrees. And you're also going to want to have a clock so you can watch the time. And a temperature gun for this is super, super important. Normally, on just like a, your basic artwork, you would pour it at 85 degrees. But this process, 86. We're not even close. Uh, this process takes a little bit more time because you want it to actually heat up to about 100 degrees or a little over is fine. And then you are going to pour it on a substrate and I will be right back with that. So we have let this warm to 102 degrees, which is great. And now, as soon as I wipe this off, I'm gonna pour it, this is just wax paper on a piece of wood. I'm just gonna pour it out. And the reason you do this is if you kept it in the cup, it would get hard. It would cure because it keeps getting hotter. If you expose it to oxygen and air, <clears throat> as you are by laying it down, then it will cool off and start to harden. So what you want to do once you do this part is just keep a close eye on it and wait until it's the consistency of taffy. As you can see, it is not. So it takes a little bit to cool down. And um, I'll time it so you guys know how long this took. Okay. It's been 16 minutes and you could probably do it now. I'm going to wait another 60 seconds. Okay. I am going to do the parts I'm not so worried about first and then do the detail work once this is even more taffy-like. But generally, look how thick that is. I'm actually running it down a seam. I uh, was blind as I cut the front off the guitar and actually ended up cutting the back off the guitar because I could not see a thing. This is a fiberglass double base, so you have to wear a mask and safety goggles. And breathing into the mask steamed up my safety goggles, so I was, in essence, blind. And yes. I cut the wrong side of the guitar off. And yep, that's pretty typical of me. So never follow my instructions when it comes to cutting or wood or tools. Um, probably not even torches because I have burned my house down a couple times. 
So we are not using this because it's going to heat up the resin and it's going to slide all over the place. Instead, what we are going to use is 99% pure isopropyl alcohol. Can you even see that? And I just put it in a little spray bottle and then we go along and these are messy. They're supposed to be. You'll see why in a minute. You do not need a torch. However, you need to know when to use alcohol and when to use a torch to pop the air bubbles. You're going to want to use alcohol when you want the resin to cool even further, meaning it's going to cure faster. If you used a torch, it would cure more slowly because you're heating it back up. So you just spray a bit on and let it sit and then we'll do the next step. Look how it's thick. You see that drip? It's just hanging on. Okay, we're just going to make some crisscrossy type designs. And these will all stay, you guys. Super cool. <clears throat> It's kind of, the front's pretty detailed, so I am just going to kind of make a mess of the sides just to cover up the fact that I don't know how to work with power tools. And just so you know, especially for you brand ambassadors of faux rizzle resin, um, I took he, Levi, who's awesome, he's the owner. Uh, also the owner of Diamond Coat Epoxy for countertops and floors and walls and all that stuff. Um, he lets his brand ambassadors take free classes. And this is where I learned how to do this technique. So if you have the opportunity, <clears throat> by all means, I'll tell you what, I learned more in that class than, I don't know, I can't believe I did art before that class, honestly. If you want the lines to be precise, you should be a little more slow and cautious than I am, but I don't want them to be precise. <clears throat> the whole idea here is to have a little chaos on the edges because, yep, everything I do has a little bit of chaos in it, or a lot, probably way too much. Now that we have our chaos, I'm going to go in and spray a mixture of Gold, I don't know where I put it, but faux grizzle has like, like a gold color. Um, so that and the 99% alcohol, again, in just a little spray bottle. And that will cause some really cool, I'll give you a close up in a second. Really cool effects in the black resin to have a pretty significant, depending on how much you spray, um, effect. So yes, you can pour over curved sides, countertops, uneven floors. No, I'm kidding. Don't do that. Um, but you get the idea here. And yes, these few drips, that's because I held the spoon too far away and it fell there. But nothing is moving, I promise you. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to see the stained glass front of the guitar and see how I made it, then subscribe and it will be my next video.